My name is Pierre Seguin, CAD instructor and support staff for the engineering graphic course at the Royal Military College of Canada. I should remind people that SOLIDWORKS is used for all the methods. The explanation in the presentation might work on other platforms as long as the software allows configuration, extrusion along a vector, offset from surface, up to surface, extraction of intersection curves, and as a deformed tool that works in a similar way. This presentation will cover the basic principles common to all the methods and the refinements needed to simplify the system to make it as user-friendly as possible. Simplicity is evident only after the fact. Reaching that point has not been simple and required a lot of thought and time. The art of the system is a three-dimensional network of interconnected sketches that have some similarities. All of them will start with an angle that has an horizontal line which will push on another line to set the angle. This will be the angle corresponding to the set square that were available to the draftsmen of the old times. They are 30, 45, and 60 degrees, but could also be their equivalent in the other three quadrants. The first system was born in 2009 as a mean to speed up the process of creating drawings within an educational environment. In this case, automating question and answer drawing preparation for oblique projection. One of the criteria was to have all the views bounded by a grid of small squares. The initial target group was very small and composed of drafting instructors only. Due to the specificity of the grid, and the fact that the receding line must be exactly a multiple of one diagonal of a square, the construction technique differed from the one normally used when constructing parts. It involved creating multiple reference planes to control depth, extraction of intersection curves so the result would flow from one configuration to another, and also configuring features to be of the deform or undeformed type. In short, it was practical only for advanced users. As it fulfilled the need we had, the system didn't change until recently. After an internet research still confirming that at present time, nobody is actually automatically producing oblique views with CAD softwares, I decided to explore if my existing system could be simplified or modified to include a wider range of users. The first simplification process was to remove the restriction of the grid and allow all the possible conventional angles mentioned earlier. The 3D structure evolved into a pre-programmed collapsible wireframe for all the variations. One of the constant value was not totally intuitive, but once it was found, the system worked perfectly. Still based on a direction of extrusion system, there was some limitation. Nevertheless, it was a lot simpler than the first method. None of the features themselves were configured, but only the values of the sketches. This meant that the extrusions of different configurations, even the normal, shared the same direction vector and were automatically responding to the variable. Also, instead of having to use the option up to and offset from surface, it could simply be made by using the blind extrude option with the actual values. This was an improvement, but the part still needed to be planned to be an oblique projection, so it couldn't be a spur-of-the-moment decision. Again, I was back to the same target user, meaning drafting instructors. One of my colleagues asked me if I would be able to import a part in my system, but I had to answer that it was not intended to be used that way. At that moment, I realized that to reach a larger target group, the system should be able to be applied after the fact to any existing part. Simple enough, but how do I get there? Having been a graphic artist in my past life, I have used extensively Adobe Illustrator since its first introduction in the mid-1980s, and I still use it on a regular basis. I am familiar with the shear tool that allows to slant a 2D drawing. If I could find a similar tool in SOLIDWORKS, it would really open new horizon for the establishment of an easy system to produce oblique projection. 
I was lucky to find one entry in one of the forum. And from the info given by this user, I started exploring how the deform tool could be applied to my system. This time I decided to be bare bone simple, with only one normal configuration and one oblique. The 3D structure became the universal master sketch system. It is similar to the previous two, but it is programmed in such a way that the dimensions are more intuitive. If the desired measurement of the receding lines is along it, the master sketch is dimensioned the same way. But if the measurement should be a horizontal value, as it is the case in the grid system, then a simple modification to the same master sketch will take care of it. For those interested in the evolution of the system, each of the individual methods will have its own presentation to explain how to set it up and how to use it. People having SOLIDWORKS might decide to skip some presentations and go directly to the ones covering the Universal Master Sketch System, which is the easiest to use. I verified and it is compatible with version 2007 up to 2013, which is the one I'm using now. For other people, if the SOLIDWORKS deform feature doesn't work as the one they have on their own platform, they may try the earliest methods that are based on the direction of extrusion. If some software doesn't offer the option, it might be possible to use the improved technique base sketch and with some fine tuning, replace the extrusion by a sweep along a line operation, keeping in mind that a depth length must be defined for each separate sweep. 